hello and welcome back everyone in today's lecture we will discuss about the measurement of torque and shaft power the measurement of torque is associated with the determination of power developed or consumed by rotating part the different types of dynamometers are used for measurement of torque as well as power the torque may be measured in terms of reaction force and arm length or angle of twist the classification of torque and power measurement techniques is given here there are basically three types of dynamometer absorption dynamometer transmission dynamometer and driving dynamometer in absorption dynamometer the energy produced by the engine is absorbed by the frictional resistance of brake and finally transformed into heat example are prony brake dynamometer block and bend type then rope type hydraulic dynamometer and eddy current dynamometer second type is transmission dynamometer in transmission dynamometer the energy is not wasted in the friction but energy is conveyed to the surrounding and is useful in mechanical or electrical form such as belt transmission dynamometer epicyclic train dynamometer torsion dynamometer strain gauge dynamometer and in the third type of dynamometer which is called as the driving in this type of dynamometer power producing or absorbing device whose power is to be measured is coupled with electrical generator or electrical motor the motor or generator measures the power and also supply the energy to operate the tested device this type of dynamometer is employed with the pump and compressor for determining performance the example is electric cradle dynamometer now <coughs> we will discuss about the torsion bar dynamometer the torque of rotating element can be measured based on the rigidity of rotating element or elastic deflection in this type of dynamometer the torque or rotating element such as shaft can be measured by the measuring the angle of twist of the shaft consider a hollow shaft inner and outer diameter r i and r o subject to torque the torsion deflection or angle of twist in radian of hollow shaft can be given by this equation in this is the torque t this is the length between disc a and disc b the length of shaft under the case study of measurement the angling angle of twist and ro and ri inner diameter and outer diameter of the low shaft and g is the shear modulus so the angle of twist in shaft or due to torque t can be measured by the torsion meter either optical or electrical arrangement here we can measure this by optical or electric here this is the optical arrangement an optical arrangement consists of a calibrated scale uh, used to read the relative angular displacement of two section at specified distance of torsion bar disc a and b mounted at distance l on the shaft moves relative to each other through an angle theta 
so as you can see in the figure now due to the application of torque on the shaft is shift twisted with an angle theta and this is recorded by the observer with help of optical arrangement so this is the torsion bar dynamometer in which we can measure the shaft deflection using the optical instrument next is prony brake dynamometer this is the prony brake dynamometer as absorption type dynamometer as we seen in the classification in which the kinetic energy this this is the kinetic energy of rotating shaft is converted into heat by the friction between the brake drum or pulley and the friction element block or band here the block we can use band as well or the friction between the this is the our drum and block the uh, energy is converted friction energy to heat energy now uh, this dynamometer can be classified based on friction element as block type prony brake and band type prony brake dynamometer uh, here in the figure this is the block type prony brake dynamometer consist of two wooden blocks here are the wooden blocks clamped together with a pulley this is our pulley and the pulley is fixed to shaft of engine or motor the block are clamped by means of two bolt and nut a helical spring is provided between the nut and upper block in order to maintain constant pressure between the block and pulley the one block carries a lever and this is the lever arm and to the other end which uh, force can be applied by means of non weight over here this is the non weight we can apply force or spring balance uh, on the other hand of the carrier there is a counter weight to balance the brake when unloaded when the dynamometer is in action the friction between the block and pulley tends to over here this is the friction between the block and pulley tends to rotate the block in direction of rotation of shaft this tendency is prevented by adding weight at the lever and so that its moment balance uh, can be done so friction resistance between the block and pulley can be measured the two stops are provided to the limit the here the two stop provided to limit the motion of movement of lever now the torque on shaft here it is our shaft and this the torque will be equal to the here the torque torque will be equal to the force into radius which will be equal to the over here due to the moment w into l the this the force into radius the torque over here there will be acting torque f into r and this is the l w into w which will be equal so we can find the power as well as you can see over here the 
टॉर्क इज इक्वल टू एफ इंटू आर इज इक्वल टू डब्ल्यू इंटू एल इन न्यूटन इंटू मीटर द पावर इज इक्वल टू ओमेगा इंटू टी वेर ओमेगा इज इक्वल टू टू पा एन बाय सिक्सटी सो वी कैन फाइंड द पावर इन किलोवट एन इज द आर पी एम ओमेगा इज द एंगुलर वेलोसिटी ऑफ शाफ्ट एफ इज द फ्रिक्शन फोर्स एल इज द लेंथ ऑफ आर्म एंड डब्ल्यू इज द एप्लाइड लोड वी नो द एप्लाइड लोड लेंथ फ्रिक्शन फोर्स कैन एन द ओमेगा एंगुलर स्पीड वी कैन फाइंड द शाफ्ट पावर वी नो दिस वैल्यू डब्ल्यू एल ओमेगा एंड एन सो वी कैन इजिली फाइंड द पावर द एडवांटेज इज दैट द इट इज सिंपल इन कंस्ट्रक्शन दिस इज सिंपल इन कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड द लेस इट इज हैविंग लेस कॉस्ट कॉस्ट एंड सुटेबल फॉर मेजरिंग स्मॉल पावर the disadvantage that the coefficient of friction is reduced due to wear out of block and hence in long run the dynamometer becomes unserviceable for measurement of large power and another disadvantage is due to heat generation temperature rises uh, resulting in decreasing coefficient of friction hence the cooling system is required one more disadvantage is that when the driving torque on the shaft is not uniform this dynamometer is subjected to several oscillations next our topic is rope brake dynamometer it is also an absorption type dynamometer rope brake dynamometer rope brake dynamometer consists of two to three ropes wound around the flywheel flywheel or pulley here in this figure there is only one rope wound around the flywheel or brake wheel this can be pulley which is connected to the engine shaft and the upper end of the rope is attached to spring balance and the lower end of the rope is kept in position by applying dead weight w on it the wooden block are placed at intervals around the circumference of flywheel these are the wooden blocks in order to prevent slipping of the rope over the flywheel or brake wheel when engine shaft rotates at constant speed the friction torque is created by means of the weight placed at the end of rope and the friction torque due to the rope and pulley is equal to the torque transmitted by the engine let the w be the weight at the end of the rope s is the spring balance reading here s n is the revolution rpm d is the diameter of the pulley small d is the diameter of rope and r effective is the effective radius of the brake drum here it is the effective radius here it is the d is the diameter of the rope and drum diameter so effective radius will be equal to capital d plus small d divided by 2 now we can find the breaking torque which is equal to the torque into tangential force or radius of wheel as we can see over here there are there are two forces one is over here another is due to spring balance this is our effective radius r effective so for 
फाइंडिंग द टॉर्क वॉट वी हैव टू डू टॉर्क इज इक्वल टू फोर्स इन टू रेडियस सो वी कैन फाइंड फ्रॉम दिस इक्वेशन टेंजेंशियल फोर्स एंड रेडियस ऑफ व्हील टेंजेंशियल फोर्स डब्ल्यू इज ड्यू टू द वेट एंड एस इज द स्प्रिंग फोर्स सो दिस इज आर इफेक्ट इज द रेडियस एंड द ब्रेक पावर इज इक्वल टू टू पाई एन टी बाई सिक्सटी थाउजेंड इन टर्म्स ऑफ किलो वॉट सो वी कैन फाइंड द फाइनल इक्वेशन फॉर द पावर विच इज टू पाई एन ओम डब्ल्यू माइनस एस इन टू आर इफेक्टिव डिवाइडेड बाय सिक्सटी थाउजेंड किलो न्यूटन नाउ द रेंज एंड स्पीड इज रोप ब्रेक डायनोमीटर मे बी यूज फॉर रेंज अप टू सेवेंटी फाइव टू थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड वॉट एंड फॉर स्पीड अप टू फोर थाउजेंड आर पी एम द एडवांटेज ऑफ द रोप ब्रेक डायनोमीटर इज दैट द इट इज सिंपल इन कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड सुटेबल मोर सुटेबल देन द रोनी ब्रेक डायनोमीटर एंड कैन बी यूज फॉर वाइड रेंज ऑफ पावर एंड कैन बी यूज फॉर लॉन्ग टेस्ट विथ लिव लिटल ओवर हीटिंग बिकॉज इट इज हैविंग द कूलिंग अरेंजमेंट सो एंड द डिसएडवाटेज दैट दट इज लेस एक्यूरस एक्यूरेसी बिकॉज ऑफ द चेंज ऑफ कोफिशेंट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन हियर इज देर इज ऑल्सो फ्रिक्शन प्रेजेंट सो इट कोफिशेंट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन कैन चेंज विद द टेम्परेचर एंड दिस इज द कूलिंग सिस्टम रिक्वायर्ड इज दैट इज ऑल्सो वन टाइप ऑफ डिसएडवाटेज नेक्स्ट और टॉपिक इज हाइड्रोलिक और फ्लूड फ्रिक्शन डायनामोमीटर हाइड्रोलिक और फ्लूड फ्रिक्शन डायनामोमीटर हाइड्रोलिक डायनामोमीटर ऑपरेट्स ऑन वाटर ब्रेक प्रिंसिपल दस द डायनामोमीटर यूज द फ्लूड फ्रिक्शन राधर देन ड्राई फ्रिक्शन एज वी यूज इन रोप ब्रेक और प्रोनी ब्रेक टू क्रिएट ब्रेकिंग टॉर्क हाइड्रोलिक डायनामोमीटर कंजिस्ट ऑफ टू रोटेटिंग डिस्क और कंजिस्ट ऑफ रोटर that is rotating disc this part and stator this part so this there is a bearing over here so it is not direct in contact with the sh shaft but this rotor is directly in contact with the shaft the rotating disc is fixed on the engine or motor shaft here it is our engine or motor shaft and it rotates with the shaft inside the stationary casing now the casing is mounted on anti friction bearing and has a brake arm and balance the system attached to it this bearing allows the casting to rotate freely except the restraint imposed on the brake arm the casing is in two halves one of the which is placed on the other side of rotating disc and the casing heavy semi electrical elliptical grooves this semi electrical grooves for grooves match with the corresponding grooves inside the rotating disc of the helical form here it is the semi elliptical grooves and this semi elliptical grooves match with the corresponding grooves inside this rotating disc to form a helix chamber through which the stream of water flows over here when a dynamometer is in operation the rotor rotating with the speed of engine 
shaft due to rotation of the rotor with respect to stator the vortex or eddy current here the vortex or eddy current turbulent of water are set up in the water this tends to turn the casing stator in direction of rotor of in direction of rotation of rotor this tendency of stator to rotate or is opposed by the arm with balancing weight that measures the torque the control of braking action is carried out by changing either the quantity of water or its pressure or by changing the direction changing between stator and rotor and here the power is equal to the uh, w power p is equal to w into n by k n by k where w is the placed at the end of the lever arm and n is the revolution of the shaft and the k is dynamometer constant now the range hydraulic dynamometer may, may be used for power up to 20000 kilowatt and for speed up to 10000 rpm so there is it as in it is having various advantages it can be used for high power measuring at measurement at high speed and second advantage is water supplied to dynamometer is served two purpose as providing braking action and cooling third advantage is that uh, high absorption capacity in small space at low cost next topic is eddy current dynamometer eddy current dynamometer utilizes the principle that the power loss produced on the account of eddy current which is generated when the rotating conductor cuts across the magnetic flux uh, this eddy current gets dissipated in form of heat therefore this dynamometer acts as absorption type dynamometer an eddy current dynamometer consists of a toothed steel rotor fixed at the on the engine shaft here it is our engine shaft and this is the our rotor which is in form of tooth the rotor rotates inside the smooth board cast iron stator this is the cast iron stator the exiting coil is fitted into inner surface grooves of stator here exciting coil the exciting coil is energized by direct current supply from external source now the stator is mounted on anti friction bearing and has brake arm and balance system attached to it this is allowed the stator or casing to rotate freely when the dynamometer is operating the rotor rotates which causes the change in flux at the points of stator and voltage is induced and local current eddy current flows in short circular path this is the eddy current circular path within the conductor or stator and 
this tends to turn the stator in direction of rotation of engine shaft this tendency is resisted by brake arm balance system that measures the torque the eddy current dynamometer can be used up to 250 kN sorry 250 kW eddy current dynamometer and up to speed of 6000 rpm and the advantage is that it is small in size for given capacity suitable for large speed range and good control at low rotating speed and the last dynamometer is servo control dynamometer the servo control dynamometer is used to test the engine in laboratory with artic uh, artificial creation of actual torque and speed variation of actual automobile engine so this is the torque and servo controlled dynamometer which is used for actual torque and speed variation measurement for automobile engine the torque and speed are measured under the actual driving condition of automobile engine the tape recording of such an exercise of engine are observed and then simulated under the laboratory conditions uh, as we can see in the figure uh, of servo control dynamometer engine speed and torque are controlled by two feedback system the actual speed signal generated by the tachometer generator from the dynamometer is compared with the preferred speed preferred speed are not preferred that is set in the tape record the actual speed signal generated by the tachometer generator from the dynamometer is compared with the preferred speed that is set in the tape recorder previously recorded in actual condition and if the actual and preferred speed are not same the dynamometer control is automatically adjusted until they are equal so the load cell on the dynamometer measures the actual torque from engine and is compared with the preferred torque this is our preferred torque and actual torque the if the two value differ then the error signal generated actuates the engine throttle control in appropriate direction both the torque control and speed control speed control and torque control operate simultaneously and continuously such that they confirm the desired value set in the tape record thank you very much for watching in next lecture we will discuss about the measurement of strain